Anybody here for first time? You. You also. But do you know about Hare Krishna? A little bit? Yeah? From before. Uh, are you? Yeah. You know? A little bit. A little bit. <clears throat> okay, so. Uh, I'm visiting here from Stockholm. Uh, I'm not from Stockholm, but I um, have a service there. <coughs> but I also have a service here. Uh, so, uh, like sometimes here in Göteborg, but main service at Hare Krishna, I <coughs> And uh, uh, <coughs> I'm born in Norway, I'm Norwegian actually, originally from the west coast of Norway. I was starting there until 1995 and moved to Sweden. <coughs> so we are international society for Krishna consciousness. Uh, so there are always, like here also, many nationalities. Where are you from? Uh, I'm born here. My parents are from Iran. I Iran, yeah. Norway. Iran and? I lived in Norway. Also? Yeah. Where? Oslo and Kragere. Okay, okay. I'm from uh, Bergen area, not the city, but... Uh, <coughs> yeah? From Lithuania. Lithuania? Lithuania yeah. Aha, uh -huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you? I'm here from uh, Malmö. You are Malmö, local. You're from Hungary and local. Huh? I'm born in Bo Born in Hungary. Huh? Yeah. yeah. And you? Ukraine. What? Where you are from? Ukraine. Are oh, you Ukraine? Yeah. Okay. You came recently or? In January. In January. Oh yeah. We also have a few in Stockholm from Ukraine. Daughters. So. Stockholm is Ukraine. You know, she knows he's come from Ukraine? Yes, she knows. Okay. We're going to translate for her. Or? She doesn't understand English. Huh? No, she doesn't. But maybe you should translate. You can do that parallel. Never tried before. But even if you don't get everything, then. Still, it's because uh, it's good. And you are from? Russia, St. Petersburg. Russia, okay. Do you have... <clears throat> okay, then we have international society here. <laughs> so, I usually say, okay, this globalism, they started in the 90s, maybe. Or, but this con was global 60s, 70s already. Uh, it was at the time there wasn't much traveling, but still <clears throat> uh, global because it is actually a spiritual movement. So therefore, it's not. Uh, it's not. Uh, dependent on your race or age or sex or nationality or we are dealing with the soul. So the soul may be born here or there, but next life you're born in another place. So the per the soul, the person is not it's not the body, it's not the nationality, it's not the race, it's not that's not that's just a dress. In Bhagavad Gita it's described it's like a dress. You change dress. So once you not be too much hung up in the material identity. Uh, because it next life there'll be something else. <clears throat> uh, so we are trying to um, there's uh, 
an well, example of a bird in a cage, if you have a pet bird, a parrot or something. So you, so materialistic civilization is that you make the cage very nice. You paint it, you polish it, uh, you decorate it, but you're not feeding the bird. It's a very nice cage, but the bird starves. So, the, so that's a missing link or missing thing in the modern civilization. It's very impressive when it comes to material development. Also, not just impressive in the good sense, it's also other things. But <clears throat> uh, Jesus Christ, he said, What's the use of winning the whole world and you lose your soul? Because we are, the soul is actually what we are. We are eternal and that is why we don't want to die. We try to survive. It's not possible to survive forever materially, but we will, we will, but the sense of, I have to survive, is because we are eternal. Otherwise, this is not a, a, a person, it's just a dead matter. It has no sense of um, surviving. If I threaten it, if I take an axe, and, it will not protest, because there are no person there. So there is that fact that all living beings, even small worm, uh, will protect itself when it's attacked. That's the proof the being is eternal. Otherwise, why you protect? Yeah. So a machine will not protect. <clears throat> so, um, so today we are celebrating this appearance of not a singative. I don't, is there any, this one, huh? painting? Alter Delia, exactly. That's the deity, photo of the deity. It's a special avatar of the Lord, so, but it is very famous or among so many avatars. Singade is famous. <coughs> So we will discuss a little bit about the significance and why this form of Nishingere or appearance is uh, given got much attention. <clears throat> so we read one verse from the Shima Bhagavatam, which is a prayer to Lord Nishingere. Uh, there are some this prayer is offered by, uh, it's an other area of, uh, how do you say, according to the Vedic cosmology, there's three main departments in the universe. The middle section, then the heavenly section, and the subterranean section. And uh, we are in the middle section, we are in the earth. But in the earth, there is not just the earth globe, there is a whole plane. Because the universe is like a big globe. There's a whole plane, and there are other places in that plane. It's called the Bila Svarga. That's where living, uh, we don't have access it with, with our, but this is described. That's why, uh, people, this is why you can say that, not the earth, but the earthly, the earthly level is flat. Not the globe is flat, but that is flat. It's a, it's a plane in the universe. And uh, this prayer is offered by uh, some personalities who live on another than the earth in this plane. 
this is so that that's <coughs> so there are people all over the universe uh, of very different species of life all over the universe everywhere is populated so I'm, I'm reading Om Namo Bhagavate Nar Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya This is the Sanskrit verse and I will read the translation also Om Namo Bhagavate Narasingaya Namaste Jaste Yate Aviya Rir Baba Vajjanaka Vajjadamsta Karmasa and Randa and Randa and Tamograsa Grasa Om Swaha Abhaya Mabhaya Matmani Bhuishta Om Kshau Translation I offer my respectful obeisances unto Lord Nishingadev, the source of all power. O oh, my Lord, who possess nails and teeth just like thunderbolts, kindly vanquish our demon like the size of fruit like fruitive activities in this material world. <coughs> Please appear in our hearts and drive away our ignorance, so that by your mercy we may become fearless in the struggle for existence in this material world. But in the Shima Bhagavatam, 4.22.39, Sarat Kumara speaks the following words to Mars Pritu. The water is always engaged in the service of the toes of the Lord's lotus feet, can very easily become free from the hard knotted desires of fruit activities. Because this is very difficult. And non devotees, Ghanis and Yogis, cannot stop the waves of Sanskrit education, although they try to do so. Therefore, you are advised to engage in the devotional service of Krishna, the son of Vasudev. Every living being within this material world has a strong desire to enjoy matter to his fullest satisfaction. For this purpose, the conditioned soul must accept one body, body after another, and thus his strongly fixed fruitive desires continue. One cannot stop the repetition of birth and death without being completely desireless. Therefore, Srila Rupa Goswami describes pure bhakti as follows. Once you run a transcendental loving service to the Supreme Lord Krishna favorably, without the size for material profit or gain, through fewer activities or philosophical speculation. That is called pure devotional service. Unless one is completely freed from all material desires, which are caused by the dense darkness of ignorance, one cannot fully engage in the devotional service of the Lord. Therefore, we should always offer prayers to Lord Nishingare, who killed Irani Kashipu, the personification of material desires. Hiranya means gold, and Kashipu means soft cushion or bed. Materialistic pearls always desire to have the body comfortable, and for this they require a huge amount of gold. Thus, Irani Kashipu was the perfect rep representative of materialistic life. He was therefore the cause of great disturbance to the topmost devotee, Pralad until Lord Nishingadev killed him. Any devotee aspiring to be free from material desires should offer his respectful prayers to Nishingadev, as Pralad did in this verse. To the verse verse, I offer my respectful obeisances unto Lord Shingare, the source of all power. O my Lord, who possess nails and teeth, just like thunderbolts, kindly vanquish our demon like desires for fruitive activity in this material world. Please appear in our hearts and drive away our ignorance, so that by your mercy we may become fearless in the struggle for existence in this material world. <coughs> Om Yana Dirmanda Sev Dinanya Lasalaki Chak Shurun Minita Tas my Sigur Venma Shi Chetanya Manovista Stapitam Yana Buddha Swayam Rupu Giramayam Danati Swapanantikam So, uh, what? could you please repeat the number of the verse? Repeat the, the verse, verse number. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> it's 5, 18, 8. I think. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so... Uh, 
There are many, many <coughs> types of living entities. They said that there's 8 million 400,000 species of life. And uh, these different species of life are, are designed because we have different karma or different desires. So if you like to fly, you can become a bird. If you like to be lazy, you can become a, this, a cat, for example. <clears throat> Cats sleep 75% of their lives. So all this, this species is not an accident um, that there are so many species. And, uh, but uh, they, when you become a human being, and you see, the animals also struggle. They have to defend themselves. Have you seen birds eat? They cannot have a peaceful meal. Always look, one, you know, take a bit and look, you know. Can you imagine to eat in such a way? They'll just <laughs> go take a meal and just looking for some mafia coming to shoot you. you know? <clears throat> That's bird life. <clears throat> but they don't bother. They, the thing is that people like animals in one sense because they also, one sense, simple. Their life is so simple because they, they're not mental. They don't have depression and mental problems because they just live their life. And if they struggle, they don't think about it, they struggle. They, there's no second thought for the animals to struggle. It's not that, you know, the lions, some, a problem that the tiger sometimes must go one week to get a meal. But it's not that the tiger get together with some other tigers and I'm tired of this tiger life. You know? I don't want to go. I am tired of going one week for every meal. And then they make a discussion how to improve. No, the animals don't do that. <clears throat> Uh, but the human being will, and you should. Thing is, when you're born as a human being, the high intelligence is not this smartphone, mystical magic. You know, <clears throat> the high intelligence is that you can start to wonder about what is this life, what is this material existence, why we have to struggle, why is there suffering? I want to be happy, but suffering and struggle is forced upon me. Whatever I do, there is troubles. This way, that way. If I don't have troubles for other people, or if I don't have trouble from the climate, or the weather, uh, I have trouble from my own mind and body. <clears throat> so, uh, so the human life is said to be the beginning of spiritual life. Even if you haven't had any spiritual knowledge given to you, just by being a human being, you can start to wonder about these things. This is natural. And that is the beginning of spiritual life, to start to question. And uh, the human life is meant for that. Uh, so animals, they are natural in their own way because they live according to their nature. That's why we are attracted to animals, because they follow their nature. But if the human being is not taking off spiritual life, it's not following its nature. If human being becomes, you know, like Donald Duck, Mickey Mouse, you know, Donald Duck is, is an animal, but living like a human being, having car, go on holiday. <coughs> But in Donald Duck, they never ask, there's never any spiritual things in Donald Duck. It's just animals living like human beings. That's these cartoons, these animal cartoons. <laughs> so if human being, of course, Donald Duck is always in trouble. <clears throat> but he never question. 
He just moves on like an, like an animal in next life. He is a dog. <clears throat> he never questions, although he lives like a human being. Uh, so that's very typical. Yeah. So if, if, if the human being is not, yeah, because what are we? We are a soul in a body with a mind and intelligence. So we have intellectual needs, we have mental needs, social needs, physical needs, but we also have spiritual needs. So the modern civilization take care of the material needs, but not the spiritual needs. And therefore it's incomplete. And I wonder why people are not happy with all this nice, comfortable life. Yeah, that's what the ignorance describes here. They don't know what is the cause of the suffering, what is, in, what make, what is the missing thing. <clears throat> um, we talk, today there is talk about holistic thinking. But there cannot be holistic thinking without the spiritual dimension. <clears throat> then it's not complete. <clears throat> so, yeah, like I said, Jesus Christ said, what, what does it, if you win the world, if you make a material polished civilization and you lose your soul, what is the gain? <clears throat> so this, I'm telling this because in this, um, appearance of Lord Shingere, he, he appeared to uh, remove the biggest materialist in the universe. He was doing, he actually accomplished what they are trying to do today. But what they are trying to do today is like mosquito compared to what Hirani Kashipu. Did. And the name was, like Prabhupada said, Hiranya and Kashipu. Hiranya means gold, that means money, opulences, and Kashipu means comfort, cushion. <coughs> cushion, uh, pillow, have a li comfortable life. Uh, so these are the two um, main important um, what to say? What we are striving for in material life are two things: is happiness and protection, comfort. Comfort means protection, peace, and happiness. These are the two main things. Why we are striving for that? Because in the spiritual world, the soul, when it fell down to the material world, it had peace and happiness. So we are striving for what we lost. If we didn't have experience of peace and happiness, we didn't know how to search for it. So just the fact that we are searching after peace and happiness means we had it at once. You cannot search after something you don't know about. Uh, but here, actually, uh, the soul make this decision because we are, soul means you also are free to choose. That is the nature of the soul. It has that freedom. But when you choose, you have to take responsibility for your choice. <coughs> so the soul has one point in time, every one of us has one time chosen to test out something else than what we had in the spiritual world. We, we try out something else, like a little adventure. But boy, was we in for a surprise. And this whole life in the material world is like, that is the experiment. And uh, you know this story of man, he heard about hell. So, so he, I know it's just a story. He heard about hell and he, 
it's thought there was a lot of the bad propaganda in hell. So he thought maybe it's fake news. <laughs> so, so he decided, I want to check it out. <clears throat> so he came there. And it was very nicely received. It was a very nice uh, reception. And he was served meal, and people were so nice to him. And and, uh, and he said, yeah, yeah, I knew it. You know, there was so much bad propaganda about this hell. But actually, this is nice. I will, you know. And then they say, OK, you want to stay here? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, sure. Now I, I've experienced myself. OK, you sign here. And then. As soon as they saw him, then they opened up, and he's really thrown into hell. Yeah, what did you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was so nice. Yeah, that's just for the guests, for the, those who are in the waiting room. <laughs> so, you know, so this, this is, uh, <clears throat> we come here with this, um, what, what is it? this idea that there is some place where I can enjoy and be have a nice time outside of God. We come all from the spiritual world without the spirit, you know. So then because we have that desire, that desire is fulfilled. But at our own uh, responsibility, you know. And uh, this is the life in the material world. And then we can try as long as we like. But at one point, sooner or later, as a human being, you will start to doubt. What is this uh, struggle? Is life ultimately this struggle to serve? Is that life just to solve problem and then die? And then have some small, short uh, breaks, you know, holidays, you know. <clears throat> so, this Hiranyakashipu, he was, uh, uh, some, as I said, the greatest materialist. He was doing this mystic yoga, <clears throat> so he gained powers, mystic powers, and he got control over most part of the universe. He could, he was so powerful that he could control rain, temperature, everything. There's so much talk about climate control today. Well, he did it. And they're not going to do it today. Because he had the power to do it. He made flowers grow in his footsteps. He had that power over nature. The modern science, they try to get this power over nature. That's what they want. But they are far from this power over nature by finding out how it works. Uh, but he had it. So he had everyone under his control. Uh, he gained, he gained this, and he, and he had to pay the price. He lived extremely uh, difficult things he had to go through to get these powers. Uh, but he was, even though he had this, he was not a nice person. He, he had all that control, but he also harassed people. What's the problem? And uh, he had one son. He had control, but there was this son, Prahlad Maharaj. He, was a devotee of the Lord Vishnu of Krishna. And this Hiranika Shippu, his idea was actually to kill God, compete with God. That was. Remove God out of the picture, 
Unfortunately, he had a son who was a devotee of his enemy, and that freaked him out completely. Can you imagine? He had control over everyone except his own son. Five-year-old boy. And, uh, and this son was pure. He had pure bhakti. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> so even he had that control, he was still fearful. That is to notice when we when we hear about such a personality, don't copy him. In other words, he he did he went hundred times farther than anyone today. But he didn't have peace. So why over and ever materially? Everybody has to maintain their life materially, but why over and ever? You're not gonna get if you don't get peace, you cannot have happiness. If you are fearful, so therefore this fear is all over the universe. That's why we are searching protection. We are searching to make life comfortable so we can have little less fear. Actually, the, if you analyze how we live, we spend so many hours working, so many hours um, sleeping so that we can work so many hours or so many, so much of our time for education and whatever. When we come older, you spend so much for health. <laughs> you know. <clears throat> and what is all this for? Basically, so you have a place to live and you have some clothes and you have protection, some protection. Most of our life goes just to get some minimum protection. Actually, you want to be happy, but most of our life goes not to be happy, no, to, to secure ourselves, somewhere or other. Uh, so this is, so therefore he was called Hirana Kashipu because he had that ability, enormous ability to comfortable life and, uh, and enjoy things. But he was still not happy. He was still not peaceful. So that program, just his example, is that this doesn't work. <clears throat> so therefore, Prabhupada said the formula, simple living, high thinking. You know, you make your endeavor to uh, maintain your life materially, reasonable way. Not too little, not too much. Whatever comes, you work reasonably, be satisfied with that. And then, high thinking, that means invest in spiritual life, to nourish the soul. Because the soul is by nature peaceful. The more you realize, uh, the more you become self-realized. The more peaceful you can be peaceful in a very difficult circumstance. You heard about Socrates. You heard about Socrates? No? 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 Socrates. Socrates. Philosopher. Yeah. yeah. Greek <laughs> philosopher. You are from Greece, huh? Yes, Albania. What? Albania. Oh, Albania, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, Greek philosopher. He probably had he uh, had discussion about Socrates. So Prabhupada said that he is, he is a self-realized soul. What was it? Yeah, because he went around discussed with people uh, in, a, in Athens, in democratic society, and he was, by vote, sentenced to death because he didn't discuss the right things. <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous, yeah. and it was a shame for them, of course, because he was such a nice man. He was not a re rebel, you know. He was a cultured man, and he just discussed with people peacefully, you know. So, but they made a vote, you know, and they sent, and he sentenced to death. But it was a shame. So, 
they hoped that they just escaped from jail, so they didn't have to. But he said, when he was in jail, he said, well, well if you, he said, first, if you're going you're gonna to punish me, well, first you have to catch me. <laughs> but he was already in jail. In other words, first you have to catch you have to catch my soul. And you haven't ca caught my soul. You cannot catch my soul. And he was totally fearless. And he actually drank the poison. And Why? Prabhupada said because he knew that he was totally peaceful. He was not afraid of that. He knew that he was eternal. And he wouldn't die. So that's a self-realized soul. He was totally peaceful and satisfied. Even though he's going to drink the poison and die. <clears throat> you also had uh, in the Beatles, you heard about Beatles? You also? Yeah, I remember. So in Beatles there was George Harrison was a devotee of Krishna. Uh, and he donated the biggest temple in Europe outside London. 1973, and he uh, he arranged for um, spreading Krishna through music, through Beatles also. So he did a lot, and he got a lot of. So he was from 1968 or whatever, 67 maybe. They were devotees. He was he was the most of the four. And all up to he left his body in 2001. In 2000, I was in UK, and his friends from the late 60s, Hare Krishna friends, they, he was sick. He was actually had cancer. <clears throat> so he, his friends from, you know, 35 years back, they were visiting him. And they came to the temple. Also. So they would visit him. They said, he is there in the hospital. And, and his friends, they were like devotees of Iskun have been devotees for many, many years. They were the pioneers. And I said, when will we become as much advanced in Krishna as he? He is there uh, dying. <coughs> and he's totally peaceful. He just, he wrote this song, I want, uh, My Sweet Lord, which is, I really want to see you, my Lord, you know. So now he was in that mood. He was just waiting to come back to Krishna. And he was totally peaceful, and he, he, he spent uh, seven hours, eight hours every morning until lunch, praying and chanting Hare Krishna. In the hospital. Yes. Nobody was allowed to see him during that period. And he said he is so peaceful, he's just waiting to. So this is self-realization. This is... Uh, <clears throat> so, you know... Like Adambakana. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, it was... Our guru was leaving the body just a short, short time ago. It's my friend also, he came to our place. And uh, yeah, he, he had some talks and he said, yeah, what do you want? Yeah, uh, I want to go back to Krishna and I'm finished with this material life. Enough. <laughs> <laughs> enough is enough. <laughs> so yeah, burning out this last attachment and hopes, you know, to this world. That's part of it. Uh, <clears throat> so, um, yeah, so Iranika Sipu, then when, he's, when he can't control his son, his own dear little son, uh, you know, normally your children are affectionate to children, but when it, he's, he, when his son didn't submit to him or his program, then he tried to arrange to damage him, kill him. 
in different ways. But because he was protected by Krishna, so in the normal means, he was not able to kill him. I mean, anybody would be killed by any of these means. There were different ways, burning and putting into oil and throwing off cliffs and stamp, go to snakes and different things. He couldn't kill him, and then he became more and more paranoid. If I cannot kill him, he will kill me. <laughs> so, so then he became really frantic, and then prolonged. And that was the, uh, what to say, the straw that broke the camel's back. When Prahlad started to preach to his friends at the school and make them into devotees of Krishna, of the enemy, and spread it, then he became so furious, he, he, he decided to, and he was, and he said, where you get your power from you? What the, which power? To be so fearless. Everybody is afraid of, of Virani Kashipu. He just lifts his eyebrows and everybody's shaking. You know? Everybody's fearful, but not his, my own son. And he said, where do you get your power from? In other words, to be so fearless. You're just a small boy. And he said, I get the power from the place you get your power from. <laughs> so, that was a big insult, because that God, you know. So, so he was, so then he said, okay, where is he? And he was in the palace. Is he here in this, there was a pillar. Yeah, he's there in the pillar also, he's everywhere. And then he, he banged his hand, you know, his fist into the, to the pillar, and out came the shing. Uh, this, uh, this avatar came out of the pillar. And uh, there was, uh, why he looks like that? He is half lion, half human being. And there's a reason for that. Because Hiranyakasi Poo had gotten the benediction, he would not be killed by a man or an animal. But this was not man or animal, it was a half man or half animal. He was getting the benediction that he was not going to be killed inside or outside. So he was killed in the doorway between inside and outside. Not day and night, but in the dusk. Not on the earth, not in the sky, not in the water, but on the lap. Not by weapons or anything living or dead. So he used his nails. And nails are neither living nor dead. They grow, but they're not living. And they are not weapons, normally. So, he, now here, look at this half, and he, what is this? And he got confused. And, the, and, the, and also the Rinshinga, the lion, they roar. You heard the lions roar. I can't imitate them. It's, you know, when lions roar, it's, so he had the, Krishna in the form of a lion roar. So the whole universe was shaking of this sound. And uh, uh, then he understood, oh, this is God, this is Vishnu. And he went to battle with him. So it took many hours, the battling, because Krishna is just playing, um, or God, which is just playing. It said he is a lion, so that's a cat, you know. So the cat play with the mouse. Have you seen? The cat catch a mouse, and then you know, lets the mouse go, and the mouse say, "I'm free, I'm free," and like, Phew! you know, the cat has total control, and the mouse, but the mouse thinks, and also the singer he let he run because he out of his grip, and I run, yeah, I'm strong, I'm going to beat him, you know. But in the end, he just, and uh, why he came? Yeah, because Iran Kashipu was trying to kill the, the, the pure devotee of the Lord. You see, we have to understand what, is, what, does, what, it, what it means. Because this whole creation, like I said, the soul leaves the material, the spiritual world, comes into it, creation, 
and tries out and uh, the Lord supplies all the different opportunities. Everything is applied to us. Sun, this body, the earth, the air. We didn't create anything of it. It's applied to us according to our desires and our karma. Uh, just like parents, they will give children a place to stay, they will give them clothes, they will give them food, so they grow up and like that. So the similarly, there is, uh, that why is Krishna doing all this? When you leave the spiritual world, why, it's just like if some children leave home, why would the parents build a whole, wherever they go, they will build a house for them. But that's what Krishna is doing. Wherever the soul is going, he will arrange. He takes care of everybody. Even they hate him. So, but the purpose is, Krishna is coming as avatar again and again, different ways. Their religions, it's the same message, is to come home, come back. This is not a place for a gentleman. This material world is not the place for happiness. There is some happiness here, but it's not meant for, just like there is even happiness in jail. You can have a place to rest, you can game, you can take some medication, you can have some good food. But it's not, jail is not meant for, it's not meant to be a happy place. It's meant to be a reformation place. So the material world is compared to a reformation place. A place where you get purified, that you get cured for a certain mentality. And this is the prayer we read today is that please, praying to the Lord, please purify or, in other words, please cure us. So because uh, the soul, Every soul has, it said, Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema Sadhya Gabunoi, Shabanadi Shuddhi Chitta Koryoda. Every soul is by nature for, uh, has a potency for pure love. Yes. No, no person is actually bad constitutionally. You can just be, just like a healthy body can become diseased. But well, a healthy body is the nature. But it can become deceased. But the natural state is to be healthy. So similarly, the soul is, every soul, even it's the worst, even now it appears to be the worst person, even this Iranic Kashipu, is pure in the heart, potentially. So, but that has to be purified. Then you will be self-realized. If you're self-realized, they will also the love is awakened. Uh, so now uh, this is the purpose of the creation. That's why there are avatars coming. That's why there are spiritual processes, is to purify us so that we come closer to. Now, if somebody like Hirani Kashipu is uh, sabotaging the purpose, then the Lord, especially somebody has come to the point of pure love and is going back to God, and finally, after so many millions of life, and somebody comes in and tries to destroy that, then the Lord becomes angry. You can just imagine if you just are uh, almost to complete a big project and in the last moment somebody destroys it. So you will come solidly, you know. So that is, we have to understand also um, that the anger, also the anger that uh, this is the anger of protection. And so if you protect somebody you can be angry at those who attack, isn't it? Like I mentioned here in Denmark, there is, uh, I'm sure that these birds are here, but you have to go out in the field. So the birds called Vipa, you know them? It's Vipa, Vipa, and they are like, they are put a nest on the ground besides the dirt roads, 
with the field, in the, in the farm fields. So we had this in my village. And they are like extremely protective. You don't know where the nest is, where the eggs is. But suddenly you go on the run and it comes this bird, you know, boom. You know, it goes like it's going to, it's going like a, like a jet plane, you know, a war plane. <laughs> and you know, and, and, and you're like, ah, they, you, know, you know, and they are so, because you are close to their nest, you know. What can I do? But they're really brave, you know. So this is this feeling of protecting the dear ones is coming from Krishna. So he is also very protective. Then Shingarev is worshipped for his the protective nature of the Lord. He's demonstrating the protective nature. So that protection is also the protection of our deceased existence. Protection also means to cure somebody who is sick. That's also part of protection. Nursing, you know, give medicine. And so, uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> so that is what we are uh, celebrating, that the life here in the material world is so full of um, challenges and dangers. And therefore, the issue of protection is very much important for us. Also, when you take up spiritual life, uh, you want to protect. Whatever you think is valuable, you would like to protect. So if you take up spiritual life, there will be challenges also. And uh, we need to pray to Lord Singer for protection. It's just like you, when you make a... When, uh, when you saw a, a seed in the ground, so the first is a creeper, a very small, weak plant, and it has to need, need extra protection. So, um, so uh, <clears throat> uh, when we are, uh, when our, what to say, spiritual development is new, when our bhakti is very new, we feel very fragile. And uh, so that this, this uh, little bhakti plant of devotion will not be destroyed. Therefore, we are praying, praying to Lord Singhadev. <clears throat> uh, and now you can say that what is the connection here? Because we are chanting Hare Krishna. We are. Our, our goal is to be devotees of Radha Krishna. And what Nishingadev has to do with that. Yeah, Nishingadev is there to help us to become devotees of Radha Krishna. He is Krishna, Krishna's father, also worshipped Nishingadev. There is a prayer uh, I would like to read to you. Just to, yes. It's a prayer by Bhaktivinoda Thakur. So this is one of the, if you see there, there are five persons on the, on the, in the front there. The, uh, the one to the neck, next to the right. Not the complete right, but next. Four from the left. That's Bhaktivinoda Thakur. He was uh, the father of Prabhupada's spiritual master. So he was also a great saint. He lived around 1850, 1900. And he had, uh, he was a great devotee. Same time he had a big position in the government. So he has some prayers to Lord Nishinga. So we can get some idea. I will read that, it's just four verses and we can close up. Within my sinful heart, the six enemies, headed by lust, perpetually reside, as well as duplicity, the desire for fame, plus sheer cunning. At the lotus feet of Noni Shingane, I hope he will mercifully purify my heart and give me the desire to serve Lord Krishna. 
weeping, I will beg at the lotus feet of Lord Nishingarev for the benediction of worshipping Radha and Krishna in Navadip, perfectly safe and free from all difficulties. When will this Lord Hari, whose terrible form strikes fear into fear itself, become pleased and show me his mercy? Even though Lord Nishinga is terrifying towards sinful souls, he offers great auspiciousness unto the devotees of Lord Krishna, headed by Prahlad Maharaj. When will he be pleased to speak words of compassion unto me, a verseless fool, and thereby make me fearless? He will say, Dear child, sit down freely and live happily here in Shigoranga Dam. May you nicely worship the divine couple, and may you deliver develop loving attachment for the holy names. By the mercy of my devotees, all obstacles are cast far away. With a purified heart, just perform the worship of Radha and Krishna, for such worship overflows with sweet nectar. Saying this, will that Lord delightfully place his own divine lotus feet upon my head? I will experience sublime love for the divine couple of Radha and Krishna and undergo ecstatic transformation called satika. Falling on the ground, I will roll about the door or Lord Shingadev's temple. Yeah, so, uh, so Prahlad Maras, so this is it's a paradox that Irani Kashipu, who had, al who had all the material resources, he could not become fearless. But Pallad Maras, who was arrested, he was fearless. Why? Because he, uh, he realized the protection of the Lord. He knew that uh, God is the supreme controller. I have nothing to fear. He had that realization. Uh, so, On such a day where you celebrate Shingana's appearance, but actually every day one can pray for protection. It's not just that you pray protection for your bhakti, you can pray for any type of protection. Uh, there are many examples. We have one Shingana deity big in Mayapur, we have also in Germany, but um, both in Germany and in Mayapur, the Nishingadev deity was installed uh, because they were attacked. The temples were attacked by, in Mayapur by decoys. It means not exactly thieves, it, like they have bombs and weapons and everything. So they actually damaged, they killed a devotee, I think, and they want sannyasi. I mean, in the beginning when they were building it, 19, after Prabhupada left, uh -huh. 1979, 1980 or so. And the Shingadev wasn't there? No, okay. no. It was a heavy attack. And then they, the Shingadev appeared in a dream to, uh, to one of the leaders there and in a specific form. And he got the idea that we have to install the deity of the Shingadev. After that, there was no more problem. Was there anybody there from that attack? I think somebody was killed. This, this uh, Bhakti Raga was something. He got his foot kick, cut off. So he has gone with crutches since then. No, it was a serious attack. Mm -hmm. uh, violent. There was also attacks in Germany, mainly on the movement. They were arrested like anything, and then they installed a deity in the South Germany, Southwest. But yeah. were they attacked at that place in, in Germany? Where they yeah, not, not, no, not on the temple, but the movement oh. in Germany was very heavily attacked. Also in, uh, in the New Vrindavan in America, they, they were attacked by Hell's Angels. <laughs> and they came and shoot them. I don't know if anybody was killed, but they... But was that in the beginning when... Other, you know, I mean, people were scared about Hare Krishna, so why do... Yeah. I mean, nowadays... In, in Mayapur, it was just simple mafia burglars, dacoids. Uh -huh. They were not scared about that. It's, it's, they know about that. But in, in Germany, they, they definitely were 
uh, scared or they were, they didn't want that kind of, you know, they were very much attacked by one priest, one Christian priest. It's not that all Christian priests are like, are like that, but he was harassing like anything. In Russia also, in Soviet Union, there was also some intellectual academic, he was harassing like anything. And, uh, and uh, so, yeah. So, uh, but it is not just for the, probably we worship in Shingale for protecting the movement, for protecting the guru, but also protecting ourselves. Yeah. But nowadays it's more calm because yes. Krishna is more accepted of it. Except for in Bangladesh, not long ago. Yeah, except for Bangladesh, yes. Yeah, yeah. It's true. Yeah. But I still tried, and in, in, in Russia there was somebody in Siberia, Omsk, they tried to ban Bhagavad Gita. But then the Indian government came in. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Even Muslims in the Indian government, because it's like a national sacred book, you know. So, uh, yes. <clears throat> but, but Prabhupada is saying that um, uh, the, you see, it's interesting thing that he was this materialist, he arrested people, but Krishna didn't come just because he arrested people, it was their karma. But when he attacked the pure devotee, who is the goal of everything, then he came himself. So that you can see happened, you know, uh, in Soviet Union when they took devotees to mental hospitals, they gave them this heavy dope that make you into a zombie, you know. It's almost like killing people. Or well, they put them in labor camps. One devotee died in a labor camp and they tortured them in jails. It was quite... But uh, soon that after... Was early days. Yeah, but soon after that, communist was finished. He finished off that to protect the devotees so they could at least practice. <coughs> So Lord Chaitanya said, no, no statesman can stop me. Uh, so in, uh, <laughs> there was, when Lord Chaitanya was there, there was one local uh, political leader who tried to stop the Sankitan. He went, like we now we have a program here. So he came into such a program and uh, destroyed the Madonga. In uh, this was in India, five hundred years ago. So he was, uh, yeah, and uh, he he didn't go too far at that point, but he made trouble. So then, Lord Chaitanya arranged a procession, hundred thousand people, in two hours, up to the palace of his leader. And he hide he hide under the bed. And but Lord Chaitanya was peacefully speaking with him, and he said, uh, "Why do you? I mean, before you tried to stop this, why are you not stopping it anymore? Yeah, because after that time when I crossed this Medanga, then I had then then this." These terrible creatures appeared to me, half lying, half man, and he spoke in a heavy voice, and he scratched my breast with nails, and he said, "You know, why are you, why are you stopping my devotees? This time, I will spare you." He didn't kill him. This time I will spare you, but if this happens again, I will kill you and a whole family. Uh, but he, and he was, <laughs> and uh, when the, so, the policeman went out to do something, they, they, their beard started burning. 
and it was just fire, you know. So, so therefore I stopped. So he, Nishingadev, in this way, he appeared there and uh, make a, made a warning. So Prabhupada said, this, this may happen again. It was understood there was one, when they tried to make a mom, temple in Mumbai, and there was a whole drama. It took two years just to get the land because the one who sold the land was a cheater and he was a big man in Mumbai. He had his own newspaper. He was in with the police, corrupt, you know. He was a top politician. Nobody could get him. And he thought he's going to cheat the devotees. So they, what do you pay? Down payment. They pay a down payment and they don't get it back. And then he canceled the contract. So then, but, but uh, Prabhupada didn't accept that. He had cheated already, he had sold the same land several times, got the down payment, and, uh, and nobody gets the land. So Prabhupada, they put the, 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 it was a whole drama, there's a whole book written about this. I can't go into all the details. But this man was also bribing the devotees' lawyers <laughs> so that they would give stupid advice. <laughs> So it was really a war going on. In the end, Prabhupada said, uh, he prayed to Lord Nishingadev. Because this man, he was a notorious demon. You know? He was really trying to destroy. They even tried to, in India, if you put the deity in a land, the culture is, you cannot, you cannot go in there and change that. That must respect is for deities, at least at that time. But he anyway sent some. And then there was ladies in the neighborhood, you know, mothers. They went in front of the temple and laid themselves down. And in India at that time, you don't, this is Mata, you don't, you respect women, mothers, you know. So they, they stopped it. So there was a whole drama, but then Yan Prabhupada, after so long time, he prayed to Lord Nishingarev. And actually, shortly after this man died, the official cause of death was heart attack. <coughs> but from inside, we know that he died and he, was, he saw something. He died in skek, in this, what do you call it, huh? Horror. horror, yeah. He died in a horror scene. So this, this, uh, but the main thing is not Lon Shingarev is, is maybe rarely doing such things, but the thing is he represents this, because you know that he first of all came to protect blood marks. He didn't first of all come to kill Iran Kaspu, first of all to protect Paladmas. He comes to protect the devotees first of all, whatever that takes, that he decides. And Prabhupada said, if, if this course of the world goes too much, okay, now they are just making them a tear progress, but if they start to harass devotees, like in Soviet Union and like that, the Prophet said, Nishin will appear again in some way or another. You see that whatever is built up now, this whole modern civilization, it's, it's like a paper tiger. It, it, it's so fragile. It's all built on digital systems. You do like this, you just destroy the digital system, everything finished. Isn't it? Yeah. It's all dependent on some supercomputer somewhere. <laughs> it's really fragile civilization. So, it's, but in this, in the middle of all this, we can, we can start our projects to spiritually grow. And whatever happens, we will, we will, that will not affect that. Nothing can affect the spiritual, whatever you have attained spiritually cannot be destroyed by material circumstances. It has nothing to do with karma. That is the 
that is the field of full freedom. <coughs> okay, Hare Krishna. <laughs> Could you translate a little bit? Or? Did you manage to translate a little bit? Yeah. So you got a little into it, huh? <laughs> yes, okay. Uh, any comments or questions? Or any? <clears throat> yes? Uh, why would I want to pray to, to protect myself, someone I know? And if all is created by God, all situations and like it should go as it goes. No. Yeah, I understand. Uh, yeah, because when you pray, you um, develop the relationship. You take shelter of somebody, you develop the relationship. Prayer is one form of service to the Lord. It's one way you can relate to Him. Isn't it? Yeah. So that is, uh, but Prahlad Maras, this boy, he uh, was on that level that, like you mentioned, that, that uh, he had full faith, whatever the Lord, whatever happens is, I uh, have no fear. But, but, uh, so he was not praying for protection. He just understood I'm protected, you know. But for us, uh, who are not on that level, so we cannot uh, artificially try to be on that level, that we just let things happen and we do nothing. Uh, we, have, uh, we have a duty. He is already fully realized. He's actually in the spiritual world in that sense. But for us who are on the path, we have to care for our bhakti plant, and we have to care for our circumstances. And we should know that we are dependent. It's, uh, that's our duty, so that we are, on another, we are in another uh, level than him. Yeah. And it will help us to understand our dependence on the... He already understood his dependence, and he was peaceful with it. But for us, we have to develop the understanding of the dependence. Because we live material life for so long time, and we think we are the doer, and, it, yeah, and we, we can make it, and we can figure it out. That's, but the reality is, and the Lord has told him, where do you get your power from? The same place you got your power from. He thought he had his own powers. No, it's not true. Actually, everything is given. You can't even remember who you are in the morning when you wake up, unless God tells you from inside. Because sometimes you forget, huh? Like you have a, did something with the arm, huh? Broken. Broken, yeah. Yeah, so before you thought, I can just do like this. And now suddenly you can't. <laughs> <laughs> so, and you didn't, it's not in your control. <laughs> so now you have that karma for some time. And, uh, yeah, it's like that. I also, I got a stroke some months ago, and then I go out to the bathroom, and suddenly my arm doesn't want to grab the towel. And I went, what's going on? <laughs> I'm so used to, uh, just grab a towel, that's nothing, you know. And I think, I can do that. No, I couldn't do that. So, so that means we are not in control. We are just allowed to. As long as we have permission, we can do it. But sometimes when we can't, then we, understood. Then we understand that, yeah, we are dependent on, uh, yeah. OK? <clears throat> All right. Thank you. So.
Yes. Thank you for today. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Um, yeah. We discussion before, and I hear it little today about uh, through the what kind of conscious we have, we go through after we let the boat in, in the yeah, different places. Yes. And uh, we want, uh, we wish to come back to the Godhead and to Krishna. And I hear sometime from the devotee and other sources, uh, we can stay in the other planets too, and we develop there and we can come back to Krishna and some others, they believe just in this planet, we can do it. Yeah. But, uh, I want little to understand about this one. Uh, <laughs> the earth is the best place for spiritual life. It's not the best place for, for material comfort, but it's also not the worst place. The earth is in between. There are places which are much more troublesome than earth, and there are places that are much more nice, materially speaking, than the earth, the heavenly planets. But no place is eternal like this. So the earth is the best place. Uh, you live not very long life, and you can make spiritual success in a short time and finish it off completely in a short time. So it's the best, best place. If you happen to come down to the heavenly planets, there's a danger because it's too good there. So you tend to be spiritually lazy. It's too good. So best to, if you are too if you are a devotee, you develop spiritually, and you are too attached to enjoy comfort, then you might go to heavenly planets. But then you have to live there for a long time. <laughs> and you will suddenly you will probably not go back to the spiritual world because it's you don't feel the need to develop more. It's too good. So the earth is good, it's a mixture of misery and some happiness. That's earth. It's best place. And that's why Lord Chaitanya and Krishna they appear here on the earth plant. Most avatars appear here because it's the best place. For even they said that devas, those who live in heavenly planets, they are queuing to get born here. Because here you can do it so quick. So uh, uh, if you cultivate nicely the Krishna consciousness, so you don't have to go to other planet, you can go. Yeah. 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 Okay. Hare Krishna. All glory to Sri Prabhupada.